Sometimes the ocean can beat you around like a crab on a beach. I'd like to tell you that this video will be about the gorgeous blue waters and white sandy beaches of the Bahamas. Or the beautiful sunsets at night and the glowing sunrises in the morning that we go to bed to and awaken with each and every beautiful day out here. Or the abundant and delicious conch, the fishing turned into sushi, and endless bottles of red wine. I wish that I could tell you this video was endlessly filled with sailing the beautiful oceans on the sunniest days, cruising in perfect winds with following seas while dodging coral reefs we then dive to and snorkel. Oh, we got tools out. That's never a good sign. Oh, Lord have mercy. But it won't be, and neither will the next few. It'll have some, but in this video, Rum Top will begin to break us down in what will be a long series of the problems a cruiser can run into and how they spiral collectively to make life absolute hell until the web of disaster is untangled. From a failed solenoid to what we thought was a small battery issue, a failed attempt to make progress east, and our main sail, well, see for yourself. Here we go. After sailing to the north end of Crooked Islands, it was time to head back south to our next anchorage in prep for going over to my iguana. But you can't go in a straight line against eastern trade winds, so our actual path will look something like this. We arrived back at the anchorage on the south end and I was up on the bow watching for coral heads as Chris pulled us in. Stakes off the front end. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just put a little salt on them and let them rest in the salt. Okay. Come back up to room temperature and then uh, 20 minutes or so, we'll season them the rest of the way and All right. fire up the grill. All right. Made up a batch of margarita from Dwight's tequila he gave us. We're probably going to see the last of that bottle tonight. But pour a margarita and go swimming. After dinner, we finished up our relaxing night with a competitive game of cards. Little did we know this was the beginning of our now over a month long engine saga. We're a bit troubled here this morning. I say so. Yesterday we went to start our engine. Something new happened. It's never happened before, and the engine wouldn't start. Well, yeah, it started yesterday in the morning, and we have an uh, overcast and windy day. And the first sign of failure was when I pushed the glow plug button, which is an attached to, to electrical warmer. It warms your engine up about 10 seconds before you start it. It allows the engine to start faster rather than from a cold start. It's not 100% required with the ambient te temperatures in the Bahamas being 80 degrees, but it helps. And so when I pushed the button, I didn't hear the solenoid click and I didn't see the small jump in the voltage, meaning that there's no power going to the glow plugs. Um, but I tried to turn the engine over anyway, and we just got rum, 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 and it didn't fire. And tried again, tried again, um, you know, at about four to four to six second intervals, and then started to take a look and, and uh, see if I could assess what was wrong. And so we started with the glow plug, and I ripped the panel off of the uh, cockpit here, 
and just checked wiring connections behind and it. then went downstairs and uh, checked the wiring from the solenoid to the glow plugs tried again I'm still not getting any activity to the glow plugs but the engine should fire it just takes more times turning over but and we so, don't want to drain our batteries that's yeah I was about to say, oh, okay. the more times you turn your engine over and use your starter, the starter uses a lot of battery power. And just like in your vehicle, if you start to try to start your car, you hear it, rah, 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 and then you hear it slow down, rah, 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 rah. And, and if you continue to do that, you'll drain your battery so much that you need a jump start. And unfortunately, we're in the far out islands of the Bahamas. Yeah in the south of the Acklands. Uh, there's not even a town on this entire island. No. Uh, we're basically starting day two of being dead on the water other than our sails. Let's have a little more coffee and then we'll see what we uh, start to tackle with here and crossing our fingers. So this line comes down from the ignition switch to the solenoid here. That's your ground wire. And this green wire I just replaced goes to the uh, goes to the glow plug. So that's the little unit right there. Being crushed into a distressing and uncertain low point in the trip, and after two very dismal days of mysterious engine problems, and our diesel Big Red being very unhappy, we had almost run out of options. Believe it or not, Facebook can be a useful tool in your toolbox. And by using a trick that we gathered from a post I added to the Pearson Yacht page, we learned that by forcing hot air into the air intake with a butane torch, might bypass the work of the glow plugs. So mentally taxed, emotionally drained, and stressed, we gave it a shot. We're running again. Woo! <laughs> what? Thank you! <laughs> it totally worked! How's oh my god! Work? Everything good? Oh my god! Ah. Uh I mean, I just went from, holy shit, what are we going to do to, oh my god, everything's going to be okay. Got it. Hello. <laughs> How's your Sunday morning going? Hey, happy Sunday. It's uh, 4.51 a.m. Yeah. What are we doing today? We're heading to a little tiny uninhabited island in the far remote <laughs> out islands of the Bahamas. In preparation for Luperon. Yes. Dominican Republic. Yes. Via Maya Guana, around Turks and Caicos, and South Dominican. Kablam! Many miles ahead. The first couple hours of this sail started out pretty good. We watched the sun come up. It was beautiful. The waves weren't too bad. The wind was just right. Until they weren't. We got to about right here. As we turned the southern tip around the lighthouse, we soon encountered waves and wind that quickly became impassable no matter what we tried. And then we looked up and saw this. After making basically zero progress after four hours and seeing this, it was time to turn around. We made our way back to the exact same anchorage we left from four hours earlier. 
It only took us two hours to get back. Yeah, we had a bad day yesterday. Our first, I would say, our first failed passage since we bought the boat a year ago. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. I guess what we thought and planned was different than what the weather gave us. Or maybe it wasn't and we just don't have the experience to know better, but well, when we looked the night before, we thought with the winds coming east, with the trade winds, that we could go northeast on a close reach. Yeah. That's what we thought. Yeah. But with the winds being more east-northeast than what we had hoped for, <coughs> we ended up having our destination become directly into pretty pretty steady 18 to 20 knot winds and on top of that this wind has been blowing for three days so it built the seas up to average six foot occasional probably eight foot they were rolling waves but directly coming at us and so it just made for a really difficult uh, it made for a really difficult time trying to gain ground in the easterly direction which is primarily the way we need to go mainly north slightly east or mainly south slightly east on tacking but after four and a half hours of doing that we were really not gaining any headway enough to the point where there was not a comfortable anchorage in sight, so turning around became the uh, only and best option. So, yeah, it was pretty much after turning around that I looked up and saw a, a, another huge tear, another tear in the mainsail, only this time it was big and in a critical point. It was one third of the way down from the top um, and in further inspection now that we've landed and checked it out it turned out that the stitching on the seam gave way and basically unzipped the whole line of where the canvases meet together um, at the top third and the lower two-thirds of our whole mainsail and so it basically unzipped the mainsail in the horizontal direction uh, rendering it useless so we dropped it down and used the staysail and the jib to get back and of course then we were with following seas and following winds so we were cruising along with gusts of 24 knots and barreling down at seven eight knots of speed so it only took us about two hours two hours to get back to the um, anchorage that we were previously at almost nine hours earlier so complete waste of day and catastrophic tear in the main and uh we were pretty sad when we turned around and i think chris and i spoke maybe five words on the two hours back because yeah. we were pretty uh, like oh shit, this is pretty devastating tear in our mainsail and it was pretty uh yeah it's a pretty bad day pretty bad day and yeah it was a pretty quiet ride back I think both of us were thinking to ourselves, oh, what are we going to do now? How do we even get anywhere? We're so far out. And for, for something like this to happen so far away and so remote, um, it's a long way to get back to um, even anywhere where we can get help. So yeah. we're kind of on our own. So our plan is uh, the winds are still They've come to probably 14 to 16. They're not terrible, but um, it's still a little dicey to try and pull the mainsail completely off the boom and take a look at it. And, and if we have to either hand stitch or get the sewing machine out and sew it, um, that might be our next best option. But um, the plan now is to stay on the west side of the Acklands and Crooked Islands. Uh, where we're barricaded a little bit from the Atlantic Ocean by this island chain and continue to press north 
and try to go around the north tip of the Crooked Islands. So what we've learned um, through um, various outlets, Facebook included, is that you know the trade winds, um, as steady as they are, are worse the south you get. So south of like Bradenagua and the major Bahama chains, it's much worse trade winds going east. So our next approach is to go, um, as Chris was saying, north, back up to the northwest trip of tip of Crooked Islands and then east over to the northeast tip of Crooked Islands and hopefully we can bounce north and then south and get over to my iguana that way so and then bounce from my iguana down to Luperon is still our hope and uh, for now we have our staysail mm -hmm. still and the jib and the motor it's not ideal kind of uh, sucky and definitely gonna need to get a new mainsail it's on death's door death's door yeah yeah or mainsail yeah it's kind of sucky but we're hopeful nah we're gonna make it don't worry about us out here we'll be fine you're, <laughs> you're good i'm good we got each other and we're always thankful for that and now we're gonna press on and another journey today another day yeah another journey yeah what else are you gonna do money what else are we gonna do mm. got each other thank god Alright. Yeah, dude. Leaving this spot for the third time. Hopefully the last time. When you're out on a boat in the middle of nowhere, stopping is not an option. Even without having the mainsail, we still had two other sails, our jib and our staysail. This was our first time sailing with just those two sails and no mainsail. But the conditions were right, and we had great winds heading north. And we didn't need the stability of our mainsail because we didn't have big waves from the Atlantic being on the west side of the Crooked Islands. We arrived at Northwest Crooked Islands in time for sunset. And pass that and still run that same line. And we worked a little more on planning our next jump. From here. Yeah, this is 125 degrees. I don't think we'll be able to get that with the winds. Mm -hmm. Because at that point in time, the winds will be coming yeah. east and sweeping north, I believe. Yeah. After doing a little research online for wind and weather, Chris wisely suggested it was time to leave the boat and go seek out some dinner and drinks. Wait, wait. All right. What's this place even called? It's called We got here a little early. We got here a little early, and I find this very interesting because there's no menu. Apparently, dinner's coming out soon. It's family style. Family it's style. Really cool. We have no idea what we're about to eat, but I'm super excited for it. Yeah, and we arrived a little early because because we've been out of beer on the boat for now. How long? Um, this is probably our first beer, and I would say maybe even a week. Yeah. It's tough times. It's hard times. It's tough times. Out of beer on a rum tot. Out of rum on a rum tot. Yeah. So we came early. Crack a couple cold collects. So. And before we knew it, the room filled up and the plates of food just kept food on just coming. Keeps on coming. I'm at the end of the table. Yeah. 
We stopped by a nearby marina to fill up our diesel tanks, and they graciously allowed us to use their dock for a few minutes to bring the mainsail downstairs, inside, and ready to be worked on. All right. Can I go back into the V-berth a little so we clear the galley? All right, at least it's in. Step number one. Yeah. In the boat. See how we do on step number two. And three and four. All right. All right, we want to take a quick moment to, again, thank our new patrons. It really uh, means so much to us. It really, really helps a lot. So we want to do a quick shout out to a couple new patrons we have. And... Gina! <laughs> Gina in Phoenix, Arizona. This rum tots for you. Yes. And my old good friend, Ed. Cheers, man. You're a doll. Appreciate Ed. it. <laughs> this rum tots for you guys. Thank you both. Cheers. And if you're interested in checking out um, our Patreon community, you can find a link below in the description. And to all of you who are just spending some time with us, we really, truly appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your day to see what we're up to over here. So how cool is that? Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and what's the other one? I don't know. Like, subscribe, and uh, turn on notifications. But, oh, you know, what else? Hit that little <laughs> bell. Bing, bing. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next time uh, for more uh, of this craziness. Mm-hmm. <laughs>